Today, we're fortunate enough to be joined by Martin Steinem. Hello, Martin. Hi, Stephen. It's nice to see you again, Martin. Martin, would you mind telling the audience something about yourself? Of course, and thank you, Stephen, for having us and uh, having the possibility to introduce AOP Health. My name is Martin Steinhardt. I'm a medical doctor and studied medicine at the Vienna University. And after my graduation, I joined the pharmaceutical industry, holding various uh, positions in the medical areas in local and regional functions. And since 2019, I'm part of the AOP Health uh, Group. And since January last year, I'm one of two co-CEOs besides Bernhard Nachbauer being responsible for uh, AOP Health. Okay, so what is AOP Health and what does it do? AOP Health was founded in 1996 um, as a company who wanted to market drugs uh, for rare and orphan diseases and also wanted to develop drugs for rare and orphan diseases at that point in time where maybe no one was that much aware what the orphan disease is but the founders knew that there are patients out there suffering from certain symptoms but there was no help and they decided to develop drugs for rare and orphan diseases the, this was the, the the founding idea and there's a headquarters in Vienna. We have started off in 1996, expanded into the Eastern European region and having now a pan-European presence where we have uh, country representations in all the European countries. Okay, so who owns the company? And you can tell me something about its cultural growth. Yes, uh, we are a non-public company. And uh, this is something very special because uh, we are now uh, we're having a presence for more than 25 years, and we have been growing organically, which means uh, first we want to earn money, and uh, with our earnings and uh, the profits we are making, we are reinvesting into R&D. And this is a core principle we uh, also want to keep, as it gives us a lot of independency, and we can decide on the way of research we believe it serves it serves best uh, the patient needs. I suppose being part of the, the the European Union, supply supply is a is a is is something that you've been able to fix up quite simply. Right, I guess it's uh, very important that we also keep in mind how can we uh, maintain our supply chain. What do we need to do to ensure to make our drugs available and especially. Uh, over the pandemic, we managed um, to have no shortages, which means a very, very precise planning. We uh, have a very close uh, collaboration and contacts to our suppliers. And uh, that's how we managed um, to keep our supply chain uh, up and running over the years and uh, managing this very well. Would you tell me something about the external reference pricing system that you're part of in Europe, please? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's important to understand that uh, when it comes to pricing and reimbursement, that uh, once you have a regulatory approval, this doesn't mean that you immediately have access uh, to a therapy. First, you need to have a price and you also need to uh, negotiate this price to get it reimbursed. And um, looking at the new pharmaceutical legislation, there is the idea that we have, um, we have um, the idea to have conditional supply for all the 27 uh, European member states, which, implies that uh, we need to have also have immediate access to pricing and reimbursement where the reference pricing system sometimes make it a bit difficult to have this immediate access. So what do you think about the what do you think about the general pharma package that's being developed in Europe right now? Yeah. The principal idea is a good one that we are providing drugs to to, to patients in the best quality available that we know as much about the efficacy and the safety of a drug. And uh, this is in a way pursued by this uh, legislation. On the other hand, this also increases costs and therefore we need to understand how we can refinance then these additional costs to fulfill this, uh, this goal. I guess I ask a lot of farmer executives, what would you change about the current regulations? <laughs> um, I would like to start uh, first uh, what um, I would like to keep. Keeping is that uh, we should further um, try to develop uh, new drugs. The clinical development is essential and also the pharmaceutical development is essential. 
what is important to understand, um, if we are increasing demands, the demands in the research, we also need to consider the costs and how can we refinance those. And um, if I look at uh, the proposals to shorten um, data protection and market exclusivity, uh, makes drugs not cheaper, they will become more expensive at the end of the day. Let's talk more about AOP, shall we? What are you doing for patients currently and what do you intend to do for the patients that you're treating in the future? Yeah. Um, our company uh, claim needs science and trust is very close to the patient as we want to understand the need of the patient, not only of the patient, but also of the treating physician. So it's important for us to understand the course of the disease. We try to understand best the science, but we also try to understand what does it mean to live with a rare disease? What does it mean for the patient? That we can then design the clinical development program based on these needs. Can you tell me more about the patients and the research that you're engaged with? Yes. Um, we are very close to patient organizations, as I said, to understand the, the need of a, of a patient. What does it mean to suffer from a certain disease? Because Stephen, if you just consider, if there is no therapy available, no one is aware about them, a certain disease. So patients are sitting with certain symptoms for years at home and they don't get a diagnose. And we see once we have developed a drug for a, a certain disease, um, you have a treatment uh, option and the awareness about the uh, disease is increasing. Okay. So I guess with your company, what are MPNs? Yeah. What are they specifically? Uh, this is a certain uh, type of rare disease. In the it's a hematological disorder, where you have an excessive production of a certain uh, certain types of um, um, cells, the red and the white blood cells, but also the platelets. And this untreated also has an impact on uh, your life expectancy and also very much on the quality of life. What research are you doing with these patients currently? For instance, we have uh, obtained the marketing aut authorization for the treatment of polycythemia vera, which is a certain kind of an MPN, where we have conducted a phase three study up to seven years. We have collected long-term data, which not only led to a marketing authorization approval, it also helped us to understand the treatment, how to diagnose, how to start the treatment, how to monitor the treatment. We have seen it's not only possible to reduce the excess blood cell counts in the peripheral blood. We can also see that the, the, the responsible um, mutations in the bone marrow can be controlled. And, and so we have a totally different picture about the disease itself and how you diagnose, treat, and monitor. Are there other patient groups that you have in the center of your work? Yes, um, as we have uh, a couple of therapeutic areas uh, where we are trying to find therapy solutions like uh, patients suffering from pulmonary arterial hypertension. Uh, we also have here a very close contact uh, to patients groups there to understand again, what does it mean for the patients? And we have rolled out four uh, clinical studies in the last months and we'll do so in the next couple of months. We are going into a first in human study with a very with a new um, mode of action, a new compound, where we try to understand how this will impact, on the one hand, um, patients suffering uh, from hematological disorders. And we also rolled out um, additional phase three studies in the treatment of another MPN, so-called essential thrombocytemia. We are going for patients suffering with pulmonary hypertension into a study where we are trying to collect data with a triple therapy, seeing if a more pronounced therapy will further improve uh, the quality and the life expectancy of these patients. And we're doing a study in pediatrics suffering from pulmonary arterial hypertension to see also if a drug helps um, children. It's quite a rewarding job you've got. Would you like to tell me more about what, what it is that you're doing as a, as, a, yeah. as a person, as an executive? I guess it's the diversity and the responsibility we have in terms of uh, doing R&D, meaning early and late stage development bringing then those um, therapies uh, to the market in a very responsible way. And how can we ensure supply uh, for these drugs that we have continuous supply for, for these patients? 
And I suppose what, what other areas of research would you like to be involved in or what other areas of research are you doing? Yeah. So we have our core therapeutic uh, areas where we have a long track record, like in uh, hematology, uh, but also, as I said, in uh, pulmonary, uh, the treatment of pulmonary hypertension and in critical care and, and intensive care. But we are open for any disease where only few patients are affected and where you need a very high expertise in the drug development itself and also in the promotion and marketing of these, uh, of these drugs. I think your job is very rewarding. What What is it you enjoy most about your job? That uh, we, given the size of the company and uh, still having this uh, startup mentality and entrepreneurial uh, mentality to, to develop drugs for patients who really need it, that we can spending our time to understand what does it mean to have a certain disease and how can we then create our our clinical de development and also drug development serving these patient needs. I suppose um, if you wouldn't mind telling me what the future future plans are for the organization. We have established a very strong pan-European presence. We have uh, distribution partners uh, beyond Europe and uh, we are aiming to go to the US market uh, at the beginning of next year. We have a new drug, drug application under review by FDA. And we also want to establish EOP country organization um, beyond Europe. It's been very interesting having a talk to you and thank you very much for your time today. I know you're a busy man. I think the work the company is doing on rare diseases is exemplary and um, the progress, the growth rate that you're experiencing is outstanding. So you're under good management and you have a wonderful team of people in the organization. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Stephen.